Fernanda and Barbara have some siding out to do. The pokey's good enough. Most teams have been going after Fernanda, it's been fair to say, during uh, this tournament. Barbara, as a left-handed player, very difficult to deal with. Very difficult to deal with, and I think most play most teams going after the right sider of the other Brazilian team, Maria Antonelli, as well. So it should be a battle between those two players for most of the day. And of course, as I say that, they serve Carolina. Carolina showing why not many teams go after her. I really enjoy her kind of emphatic approach to the ball. Gets the arm swinging. There's a lot of motion that leads into her attacks. Good dig. Oh, a little bit of luck, maybe. Fernanda will take it. She'll tell you she meant to do that. I don't know that she meant to tuck it that close to the line, but it did look somewhat intentional at the very least. Barbara now with the serve. Good read from Antonelli. Oh, that's a great swing. Sometimes in those situations, you don't go and commit fully after making that dig and in transition, but she really got into that one to put it away. Absolutely. We've talked a little bit about aggression, especially in transition. I think it's hugely important to come in hard with at least the capability of hitting. And Maria doing a nice job of it there, Antonelli. Fernanda was under a little bit of pressure from the serve, but looked to be in a good position to have the swing, just didn't finish her hit properly. Unforced error from her, and it's Antonelli and Carroll who lead by two in the early stages of this first set. Fernanda only putting a, a down ball in, and Antonelli Unable to capitalize on that. The ball just seemed to drift away from her, having to play it with her left hand. It'll be interesting to monitor that as the matches this match goes along. Both teams already with one or two missed opportunities in transition to score reels, and those are critical points in teams so closely matched. Fernanda now with the serve. She'll go racing. Well, she won't go racing through to the net. Getting a little bit ahead of herself. Just how important is it to have a pre-serve routine? I think it's critical because you want to try and remove all the variables that you can, whether that's the score, the pressure of a match. Great serve there from Carolina. So the more you can make one point look like every other point, the more relaxed you're going to be able to be mentally as we take a look at that serve again. That was an excellent serve over the top of Fernanda. We thought it was going to go long. And we've seen this south side be the better side to serve from all day long. For that very reason, the wind kind of aids it, knocks it down a little bit. That one just long from Carolina. Barbara just flicking the sand up with her feet to get an idea of what the wind's doing. But the players will take on information from their partner before they go back to serve. But then once they have that, they get their routine going to make sure the ball goes where it needs to go. Nine times out of ten. Good side. Nice little play that from Barbara. Actually, I was going to say it's a good side out, isn't it? Because they got the point from service. I think that's a nice example of Brazilians knowing Brazilians. They had Fernanda pulling into the angle, and Barbara was already waiting in the angle as well defensively. Nice little shot there from Antonelli. Clever roll right over the block and just in front of the defender, Barbara. Line blocks being signaled by Carroll as Antonelli gets ready with the jump. Serve, oh, that's close, very close, but no arguments from Antonelli as the line judge signals out and the referee in agreement. Splash some sand on the line, maybe, but just wide. Thank you. 
couple successive service errors now from Fernanda. She'll be looking to clean that up if they hope to stay competitive in this gold medal match. It's one of those things, isn't it? It can wear you down as well over time, because if you're not putting the ball in, the other team aren't expending any energy. They're making sure you're then playing the ball to get your side out. You're working twice as hard as the other team. Great block from Carroll. Let's take a look at this replay, her handwork as she just throws him into the line, shutting it down. Really nice job from Carolina Solberg. Oh, it's another great block, and Carol doing exactly the same thing. Started inside, draw her hands back to the line, made a great block. Swatting into the deep court, really nice job from Solberg there. Yeah, to your point on the missed serves, there's kind of this idea that you want to maintain pressure on your opponent as much as humanly possible. And every time you miss a serve, that's like a little click on the pressure release valve of sorts, right? It, it's a chance for the opponent to exhale, relax a little bit. And you don't want to do that because then you've got to kind of add more pressure to get back to where you started in the first place, right? It's fascinating, isn't it? And, and a lot of it is that is that psychology behind it. You've just missed your serve, you're frustrated. Now the pressure you feel might be on you even more because now you've got to make your side out on the basis you think the other team is probably going to get their serve in. And as the game wears on, it's all about that ability. And, and we talk about it before, and you'll see it here. These two teams very evenly matched, not much between them physically. What we are seeing and what we're going to see more of is these teams know each other's tendencies very well. I think those two blocks Carol made really showed that she knew Fernanda's tendency in that situation where she was going to go. But the mental toughness of these two teams is just critical. And it'll be the team with the better mental toughness will probably see it over the line. Done it again. Three blocks in a row from Carroll. Fantastic. Looks a little bit to me as though, as we take a look at this again, Fernanda's just softening up just a little bit, and that's allowing Carolina to just swat those soft shots back. She's, she's got to stay a little bit more aggressive, does Fernanda, I believe. Certainly was very aggressive in the semi final, Fernanda. So too was Barbara. Barbara's not really had much of an opportunity at the moment. That's more like it. That's what exactly what you were talking about, exactly what the crowd want to see, and I'm pretty sure exactly what Barbara wants to see as well. My feeling there is that for Carolina to stuff that ball, she's got to be perfect. If you do a soft shot, there's so many different ways that the defense can defend against you. But against the hard hit, they've got to be all but perfect. A serve from Barbara backing up that side out from Fernanda. The ball that's in that corridor of uncertainty. <laughs> and Maria thought it was going to go along. The aggression on the green side rewarded with the ace. And that's one way to release the pressure. If you get drawn short, or even if you can get drawn long, if you can put the ball up in a position where your partner then has the option to have a swing, pressure's back on the other team. Absolutely, and I love how Carolina comes in at that ball hard and then softens up. Good read from Antonelli. But she can't get past Fernanda. Technical timeout. And it is the team in green who have the lead. That's one of those quote unquote mistakes of aggression though that you can tolerate if you're the team of Maria Antonelli and Carolina Solberg, as we see Fernanda shut that down. Maria's being aggressive, she's taking a good swing, Fernanda just makes a better move. We'll look at the uh, team comparisons in terms of their world ranking at the moment, their tournament seeding, and then the uh, sets that they've played, won and lost, and the matches that they've played. They really do have pretty much identical records in that department.
for any of you out there wondering how difficult it is out here on the world tour, Maria and Carolina were in the qualifier to start this season. They ended up making it all the way to the final in The Hague, taking the silver medal home, coming out of the qualifier. They lost to another team that was in the qualifier, Alex and April of the United States, in that tournament. That was just a wild tournament, but uh, they clearly are establishing themselves as a team to be reckoned with. It certainly, you get the feeling looking at, at this partnership of uh, Antonelli and, and Carroll, bringing Carroll in, a younger player, just seems to have almost given Antonelli like another new lease of life. It's that reinvigorated her in the way that she plays. They talked after their semi semi-final win about kind of the vibe they have, the chemistry on court with one another, how, how much they enjoy playing alongside one another, and how that helps carry them through the inevitable difficult moments on court. You can kind of see how much they enjoy being next to one another on the court. I think the same could be said of, of Barbara and Fernanda as well. It's, it's a great sense of realism, isn't it, from, from the top teams that you know, you know you're going to have bad moments, you know you're going to have bad plays, you know you're going to make mistakes, even at this level. And it's accepting that, understanding you're going to do that, and being able to deal with it. And not getting mad at your partner. Nice put away from Antonelli. Antonelli seeing Carol going behind her, even though she had to dig the ball with the reverse dig for her to put it away. Good recovery from Carol. Another chance, though. Barbara has a chance, but good read from Antonelli again, who's been putting herself in the right place. This might come back, it will not quite make it. And I think had it come over, there was no chance that Barbara and Fernanda were going to be able to deal with it. Really good effort this from Fernanda and Barbara, but in the end, all in vain. I love the play that we saw midway through that rally where Carol just slapped it over on one as she was retreating off the net. Not in great position to make the perfect dig and certainly not in any position to get up and swing at it. So she just whacked it back over onto the other side, trusted her block and defense to get the job done, and they did. Once again, Carol jumping into that line against Fernanda. This might, no, oh, won't quite stay in, stay in play. Brazil, as, as a nation in uh, women's beach volleyball, one of the best exponents of breaking from the net with high hands defense. And I think had that ball not hit the top of the tape, as we see there on the replay, Carolina would have had that dig. Just enough to throw her off. Barbara with the serve. Antonelli again, the target she has been so far throughout this match, but she's equal to it with a good swing. Going past Barbara in the cross court. Really in a nice rhythm here offensively, it looks like, is Maria Antonelli getting up and swinging hard at the ball. Good leave this time. Another one of those serves in between players, making them question who's got it. And then is it in, is it out? But a quick decision made, the right decision. Oh, and now it's Fernanda with the serve. And she'll come through to block. Nice cover from Barbara. Did it catch the block? It didn't. It was nowhere near the court. That's been the one problem area, I guess you might want to say, for Barbara. When she gets drawn to the sidelines, at times loses awareness of where she's on the court. We saw a couple of cut shots and a couple of rolls in the semi-final that, that went wide. That's an example where she's actually had a swing and she's done the same thing. Nice. You can see why Carol on that occasion not making the block and deciding or didn't get, get near it, but watching Fernanda's technique as she comes in, she does have that tendency to want to turn to hit. And Carol was successful making those three or well, two blocks against her, then one against Barbara by being aware of that tendency when the ball was a little bit tighter to the net and she could get in onto it. 
Line block signaled by Fernanda as Barbara gets ready to serve. What a swing there from Antonelli. That's an amazing swing because Fernandez has gone, yeah, that's out. It's gone past me. It must be out. And it was in comfortably. There was hardly any room to work with, but somehow she gets it past Fernanda and puts it down the line. That's a great swing. Threading the needle. That time. Fernanda holds her position cross-court and gets a very good angle on that. That was a big swing. Again, I like that from Fernanda because it requires a perfect play on defense. If Antonelli's able to dig that and put it away, you just tip your hat to her. Foot fault from Fernanda. Sometimes see that with the jump servers, but not often seen from a float serve. Blockers have such a tough task of serving and running up that sometimes they get a little bit ahead of themselves, themselves as I did on that sentence. Good touch and recovery. Oh, brilliant. Well, you were just, it's one of those ones where you're thinking, actually, you really wanted Antonelli to go up and swing on that. And then you're thinking, oh, she's lost the opportunity. But what a great recovery from Carol to make the block and really spare Antonelli's blushes. Another great move to the line with her hands by Solberg. Well, it was a great pickup. But Carol realized straight away she was never going to get that. Good idea to just save a little bit of energy, especially as the person that has to run up to the net every time. Cross court block signaled now against Antonelli. The change up coming perhaps here. Although that comes to nothing. Set point now for Carol and Antonelli. but it's not going to count, net touch given against Carroll. And then she's like, oh, I didn't get away with it, did I? No, you didn't. And acknowledges that uh, she touched the net keeper, it's the second referee spotting that one. That's the veteran Jake Gibb move right there. You celebrate it, and then you pretend that you're in shock that they actually caught your net fault. Ever so slight. As we discussed, it always amounts to either a hitting error from the other side or a dig behind you anytime you net. Nice block from Fernanda, now making her impact felt. A bit of momentum here, perhaps, as Fernanda makes that block and making the score look that little bit more respectable. Four opportunities for Antonelli and Carroll to take this set. It's done at the second time of asking. Carol puts it away cross court, and she and Antonelli take the first set 21 60. Mentally, I think that is what you're trying to do when you're down by four or five points, like Barbara and Fernanda were there. You're just trying to generate a little bit of momentum for the second set if you can. And an interesting uh, something that for those who've been watching um, throughout the, the day will have, will have heard this, for those who are just joining us for the final. Something you mentioned about the culture, particularly in certain volleyball that Brazil, particularly they like to pick on one player, then towards the end of the set go after another. We saw that then. Suddenly, Fernando and Barbara changed up. They went after Carol for two. They got one off of her, but couldn't do it for the second time. But they hadn't gone at her the entire first set. I think it's a great way to operate because they obviously have a good game plan, or a game plan they're comfortable with anyways against Maria Antonelli. But 
that leaves an entire set where Carolina hasn't gotten into any offensive rhythm whatsoever. So when you're down a couple points, why not throw one her way and maybe catch her off guard, catch her out of rhythm a little bit, and see if that can't work for you. And it's a, it's a very good tactic. Slightly extended break as the teams get themselves set for the second set. One of the things I found quite interesting actually watching that was perhaps there wasn't as much going on through the net as perhaps we may have thought might happen. There was no afters, there was both teams very much focused on each other and did what they needed to do. And from that perspective, it looked as if Barbara and Fernanda didn't really put perhaps as much pressure as they could have done on Anthony to see what, what might happen to them. That's an interesting point. You know, I, I think that perhaps all it was is that Antonelli and Solberg got in a really nice rhythm. I think we, we talked a little bit about kind of the aggressive mindset. And I think Antonelli did a particularly good job of staying aggressive throughout the majority of the first set. Fernanda had a little bit of trouble kind of early, midway through that first set, and that, that was perhaps the only difference. So here are the stats from the first set. Same number of kills, same number of digs. The blocks was the difference, and that little streak from Carroll getting three in a row, separating the score overall to add in a couple of the other points here and there. And it's just making that move, it? finding the right time, and then making that move I wouldn't say it was like a special play as such, but sometimes you might think, right, this is what we need to do in this situation, we'll, we'll, we'll try this, but Carroll got that tendency, a tight ball to net, jumped into the line, a tight ball to net, jumped into the line. Then they went to Barbara, and probably that third one might be a little bit more lucky, but certainly those first two against Fernanda, set the tone then, gave them that lead that they were able, they never gave up. They never gave up, they did a great job, and again, as you just mentioned, it was the blocking of Carolina Solberg that was the difference in that set. We saw it be the difference in the third set of their semifinal match. She put up three or four stuff blocks that really separated them and got them into this gold medal match, and she's continuing it here. Second set underway, Antonelli with the serve. It's Antonelli and Carol leading by one set to nothing. Bit of a scramble here for Fernanda, and that one hasn't made the sideline a great start for Carol and Antonelli. Although I guess in the context of it, it's nice they've won the first point from serve, but in the, it's only the first point, and actually siding out, if they'd have sided out and been one down, they wouldn't be worrying too much, as Barbara and Fernanda probably aren't worried too much about being one down, unless they go two down here. It's not going to happen. A little bit of luck from the net. Barbara gets the side out. Both teams giving it their all in that round. I agree with you that one point, especially when it's the very first point, isn't damaging one way or the other, but it does, if you're the team that lost the first set, it does continue to mount on you psychologically. If you give up, particularly if you give up real points to the other side. That's an ace serve. Barbara finding the baseline. This is a strong rotation for Barbara and Fernanda because Fernanda's already at the net. Unfortunately, though, not making the most of it with that serve. One of those situations we talk about where that releases the pressure valve just a little bit, right? You give up the ace, the pressure's on you even slightly, and then they let you off the hook. It just feels good. Big hit from Fernanda that time. Really nice job from Fernanda staying aggressive, giving her full power to that shot. That ball just swirling around off of the float serve. It's not going to stay in play. And Barbara and Fernanda open up a two point lead. Really tough serving here early set two from what's been the more difficult side to serve from. Yeah. 
Carroll wanted to have a hit, Fernanda saying he'll go on, but right into my hands. And at the end change, it's the team that lost the first set who find themselves three in front. Have another look at this block again. And that's really nice to see actually from the, from the uh, net cam, just how far across the net Fernanda gets. Great job leading with those hands into the angle, all the way outside of her body for the stuff. That is an excellent serve. It was aiming for the corner of the court, high to Carroll's shoulder. And the Brazilian team in green rolling here early set two, four point lead. They're going after Carroll again, line block signaled by Barbara. It's another good serve, well passed. Unforced error, but there's a net touch against Fernanda and the chance to go five in front is wasted. That's the biggest of exhales. And a huge sigh of relief. Sometimes you get a little overzealous up there at the net, trying to push too far over into their airspace. Another big hit from Fernanda. We talked a little bit about adaptability throughout some of these matches today as we take a look at this swing from Fernanda. I think Barbara and Fernanda have done a great job of A, going after a different player. They're going after Carolina in this set with some success. And Fernanda's really stepped up her aggression level, I think, offensively. whether or not Carol and Antonelli can respond. They're three behind. They've got the cushion of the first set already in the bag. That's a nice pick up from Antonelli. And then classic beach volleyball. The team breaks from the net and the player who's slightly off the net goes down the middle and gets the point. Nicely placed from Antonelli here. If this ball goes Anywhere near Fernanda, as you mentioned, the Brazilians, the best in the world at digging those balls while in retreat from the net. Places it just enough outside her reach to get the kill. Carolina almost gets the block with the bicep there. That would have been impressive. It was definitely a sigh of relief from Barbara. She realized she's gone up, suddenly there's a block in the way. Ball on two works. Cross court signaled against Carroll. Line block signaled against Antonelli. And the tactical change still in evidence. They go after Carroll. It's going to be a free ball here of sorts for Fernanda. And she dispatches it brilliantly. And the lead increases for Barbara and Fernanda. I'm not sure we've seen her shoot a ball yet this second set. She is just feasting on everything, and it's really working out for the team of Barbara and Fernanda here in the second set. Good leave from Carroll. Again, being attacked high to the left shoulder. It's a good place to go, isn't it, when you're, you go, because the player then has is generally turning away from their partner, taking a ball that's further away from their partner. And that's an ace serve from Antonelli. Great reply from her and Carroll. Watch this just dive at the last minute. You could hear the out call from Fernanda. It looked as though it was going to be out, but the wind just knocked it out of the sky. Another testing serve. Oh, nice play from Barbara. Had a little look before she went up to swing on that one to see where she had opportunities. Just like we saw from Antonelli a minute ago, Bar uh, Barbara does a great job swinging right up the corridor of discontent corridor of confusion. 
Clayton. I think I live my life in the corridor of confusion. No confusion for Antonelli and Carroll as they get that one down. They get the deficit back to two. And now Carroll will serve. Not their strongest rotation, though, as Carroll will have to scurry to the net. Needs to, one, get it over, two, make sure it's tough enough that uh, Fernanda and Barbara can't attack on two. And then try and stop Fernanda almost, but not quite. I know you love that sidewinding approach of Carolina on her serve. It's one of those ones, is that you, you set up as a server, and then the serve-receive team set up based on where you're stood. But then she takes a little step inside and creates a different angle. And if the team don't react, they can find themselves in trouble. And that's what happened in the semi-final at Brazil 1, with the, uh, the team that they beat just at times didn't know what to do with the ball suddenly not being served from where they'd set up from. Have another look at this one. Uh, Fernanda getting a touch, but it looked as if more of the ball had gone in the net, to be fair. The name of the game is creating discomfort in your opponent. And any way you can do that, whether it's a sidestep on your service motion, whether it's a juke in the backcourt, whatever it is, that's your goal at, on defense. Into the technical timeout. And it's Antonelli and Carroll who have the lead. They are trailing by one set to nothing. far too dignified to play inflatable musical chairs, are you not? No, <laughs> but we're not too undignified to uh, run around a stick uh, ten times and then try and run in a straight line. It's another favorite here in between sets. You get a lot of the pump fake from DJ Rocher, our great DJ here. He loves to give him the on off his own version of the cat and mouse game with the musical chairs fantastic well, some fun being had by the fans everybody enjoying this fantastic Huntington Beach Open. We mentioned it during the day's previous matches as well, but I'm I'm really excited to see what fan turnout we got here, even in the absence of any American teams. It's really a testament to how much people love volleyball. It's really uh, what these players deserve to play in front of. And it's a testament to the fact we've got uh, Olympians on court, some of the best players in the world, and the fans acknowledging that, getting the opportunity to see them in their backyard. And not surprising that, uh, that they're out in force, a capacity crowd here to watch this final. And a great rally won by Antonelli and Carroll as they continue their comeback in this set. Midway through that rally, as we take a look at the final point here. 
you saw the prowess of the Brazilians at that pole digging. Carolina pulling and just controlling that ball beautifully with her hands. Nice. That time, Barbara went wide and it was quite a quick ball out to her. And Carol having to sidestep, never a good move on the sand, just couldn't get there quick enough. And it actually opened up the angle back inside for Barbara. Cross court block signalled against Anthony. Had two cross court blocks signalled. But Barbara still having issues with her serve at the moment. And that's what's keeping Carol and Antonelli in this set. Yeah, I would agree with you wholeheartedly. In the absence of a few of those Barbara service errors, this second set might be well out of hand. <laughs> Antonelli making the dig. Carol not giving up on it. Well, unfortunately, it looks as if it might be one she was going to get, but the higher it got, the further it suddenly drifted away towards the promenade. I want to see end. one of those distance trackers on that. I mean, she must have run 70, 80 feet. And that's not easy to do on the sand, but actually here at Huntington, it's uh, quite, what do you want to call it, like the, the top a few centimetres. It's, it's very, very fine. Not easy to get your footing. It's interesting to me, we saw almost that exactly on defense from Maria and Carolina in the first set. Carolina thought better of running all the way after it, but when you're down a few points, as we see her slap that over the top, you got to go after that one. Do anything to try and generate a little momentum for your team. Fernanda having to make a chase, and she's done that. Hoisted high by Barbara, so Fernanda can get back in and get to block, but plays defense by breaking, and it's Carroll who gets the ball away. Because it's easy to be able to pick your moments when you're leading, but when you're chasing, you don't have that luxury. You have to take every chance you can. And right now, it's Carroll and Antonelli getting back to within one, taking that last chance, looking to try and get level. She'll want that one back as the two teams switch sides. I kind of think about it in terms of a progression. Effort is going to lead to touches. Those touches are going to lead to digs. Those digs are going to lead to points. Those points are going to lead to wins. Without, and it all starts with that first piece of effort. So without the effort, that whole thing can't get started. Changeup is still working for Barbara and Fernanda. And they're going after Carol far more in the second set than they did in the first. Carol's making a few errors. And that one hasn't found the sideline. Suzanne Larry's going to go and have a look. First thoughts from up here was it hadn't caught that sideline. I think that one was. It's going to be hard to tell, too, because it looked like it almost hit a pre-existing ball mark. Look on the replay. I appreciate the referees getting off the stand and taking a look at that. I think that that's what these players deserve to have happen, rather than just trying to speed up the pace of play. Nice up from Barbara. Fernanda trying to be cute, go over on two. Barbara, as she found an angle to put it down, not quite. Antonelli working hard, lots of line for her to use, and she's done it brilliantly. Excellent rally. Again, Antonelli doing a great job staying aggressive in transition. Nice little slap down the line. Didn't have much space, but she found it expertly. 
more than anything now. Antonelli wants to back this up with a serve that goes in. They're going after Barbara with a line block. Oh, that was a chance, but it must have been just that little bit too high. It looked from up here as if Antony was going to be able to get a hand onto that one. See, it does just go over her head, it looks like. Yeah, just out of reach. Jumbo knuckle pokey. And not only that, actually from the position that ball came in, it, the uh, sun would have been into the eyes of Antonelli. That can affect depth perception as well. Big swing, good dig. Barbara's on to it, Fernandez hammered it down. She stayed out of the net. Just a wonderful show of all-around ball control from both sides, quite frankly, but Barbara taking that ball off the top of the block and shoveling it up there perfectly for her big, tall partner to smack down to the sand. There's two things going on here. One, a great dig, and two, in the moment of making this dig, also putting it in a position where you can now have a swing. And all of that going on whilst trying to make sure the ball didn't hit the sand in the first place. It's just incredible athleticism and tactical play in the middle of a rally. Oh, it's an ace serve! Brilliant from Fernanda. They've been attacking that left shoulder of Carroll in the same way that Brazil in the form of, of Carol and Anthony have been attacking Fernanda. It's set point now for Barbara and Fernanda. Love that swing from Carolina in response. They dropped another great serve in there, did Barbara and Fernanda. Carolina got up and just uncorked one in the angle. And if you're going to go down, you're going to go down fighting. And that's exactly what Carol's done. Staved off perhaps the inevitable in this second set. Yeah, again, what has to be on Carolina and Maria Antonelli's mind is just creating a little momentum if we do, in fact, go to a third set. And we will. Nice play from Barbara. She finds the angle, and Barbara and Fernanda take the second set, 21-15. All tied up at one apiece. The captains will come back out now to toss the coin to see who'll serve and who'll receive as we get ready for the decider of this gold medal match here at Huntington Beach. Stats so far from this game. Same number of hitting us, but service errors. Barbara and Fernanda with 10 service errors. It's the deciding set here at Huntington Beach, this FIVB four-star World Tour event. The women's gold medal match, an all-Brazilian affair. The first team here to get to 15 and win by two clear points will be going home as winners. Nice start, Barbara puts that one away. Cross-court block signal against Carroll, line block against Antonelli. Barbara and Fernanda went after Carroll in the second set after going after Antonelli in the first, and that was unsuccessful. Going after Carroll in the second has proved to be successful. They're going after again here in the third, and already uh, it's paying dividends. Cross-court block signaled again. Well, that's brilliant. And knowing which was then cross-court in that situation because the ball was popped up into the middle, but it was the way in which Carroll approached through that middle, which meant that uh, Fernanda took that position. And for her, that was the cross-court, made the block. Three to zero. Brilliant start, this. And a little switch of sides for Carroll and Antonelli. But it could be 4 nothing. It is 4 nothing, And that will now bring about timeout for Carol and Antonelli. 
not the start they would have wanted here in this race to 15. They change sides to see if that would fool Barbara and Fernanda. It didn't. And it's Barbara and Fernanda who lead 4-0. Cross-court block signals by Fernanda after Carroll once again. Carroll responds this time by putting it away to the line. Teams change ends on multiples of five points in the deciding set as it's a race to 15. Carroll will be delighted to have got that one away. Barbara, though, straight back into the groove with that right line roll. Brilliant. Fernanda jumps into the cross court. Carroll is feeling it at the moment. Great timing from Fernanda. Brilliant from Barbara. And it's her cross-court cut that takes the point. After picking up Carroll. 7-1, what a start. Brilliant pickup, and then up quickly. Actually getting up, stepping back to give herself room to come in onto the ball. And then coming up with that shot. Another point for Carol Nancy, but it's only their second. However, they mustn't panic. Have to stay focused and try and wear Barbara and Fernanda down. That's one of them. Chipping away at the scoreboard. Fernanda puts up a poor pass and it costs her and Barbara a point. That one going in between Barbara and Fernanda. Fernanda with the error. Oh, what a turnaround already this is becoming for Antonelli and Carroll. At 7-1, you'd have thought, well, that's it. They're done. No chance, but they've come back. Two quick points. Carroll now with the serve again after Fernanda again. Big swing from Fernanda. Oh, 
of Carol didn't know it, she certainly does know that she's the player who's having to do the siding out, and she's the player who's just put up the huge block to deny Fernanda one-handed put down. Excellent work by Carol. Fernanda ridden the storm. Carol taking some time, getting her glasses clean. Getting a breather at the same time. Fernanda will serve. Carol the target. Line block signal against Antonelli. Just going after the ball by the looks of that signal. And it's Barbara who's rolled onto and Barbara who brings it cross court with a wonderful spike. Ten points to five. Barbara Fernanda into double figures. Five ahead of Carol and Antonelli, who started this match so brightly, taking the first set 21-16. But losing the second to 15, and they're trailing by five here in the third in this race to 15. Fernanda with the serve. Clever pokey from Carroll, deep to the corner. Perfectly placed. Good up. Hard swing, but Barbara was waiting for it. And Barbara comes back with a lovely little pokey to frustrate Carol and Antonelli and increase their lead. Good up again. Another chance though. Carroll has a look cross court, puts it away. Antonelli and Carroll not giving this one up just yet. No! But they may have little choice as Barbara pokes that one into the corner. Time with the roll, deciding not to go hard cross court. It's another point for Carol Antonelli. 9-12, not that comfortable at the moment for Barbara and Fernanda, but still though, they have the lead as that one hits the sand.
Great dig. Good recovery. But Fernandez not letting that ball come over. Still, she won't let it come over. Oh, incredible, incredible rally. Amazing blocking from Fernanda. No matter what Carol and Antonelli tried, Fernanda just wouldn't let it come back. Just brilliant. Try as they might, they couldn't get it past Fernanda. to Carroll again, Barbara with the serve. There was nobody in at the block, Carroll didn't know that, Fernanda hammers it down, it's now match point for Barbara and Fernanda. Carroll to try and keep them in it, and it's not happened, it's gone wide, it's all over. And it is Barbara and Fernanda who take gold at Huntington Beach. They have beaten Carroll and Antonelli by two sets to one. A magnificent match. A wonderful spectacle of beach volleyball. And it is Barbara and Fernanda who take gold.